Okay. All right. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning to everyone, wherever you're watching us from. We're so glad to have you here today. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is my first time of actually going live on YouTube. So I'm so, so excited to be doing this. So if there's any technical difficulty, just bear with me because it's newbie stuff. But I'm really excited <laughs> to be doing this today. Today, like you've already seen the topic, you know, it's going to be just relationship. And I know you people love love. You love relationship talk. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, we all work hard to learn more, improve ourselves, develop ourselves. And today I have a special guest with me. Oh, and if this is your first time of visiting my channel, my name is BB Babatunde Ikotu. I'm a faith and lifestyle content creator based in Ontario, Canada. And thank you so much for stopping by please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and also show us some love in the chat session right so today i have a very special guest with me um and i'll just let her introduce herself and tell us a little bit about herself so over to you antonia <laughs> Hi everyone, and thank you so much. First of all, thank you for um for doing this with me. I know I just stopped you. <laughs> you were like, no, sure, this is actually gonna be awesome, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm really excited and I'm able to do this. Um, um my name is Antonia Kikelomo, and then Oluwatumini. And the reason why I'm actively now saying that is because everyone has always known me to be to me, to me, mm -hmm. to me. And I just I realized that I mean that's that's my name, yes, but that's not what's on my government. <laughs> <laughs> so like whenever I write that down, I was like, is that you? I'm like, okay, so let me just put it out there. But um, I'm a project coordinator, I'm an event coordinator, and I'm also an author. Mm. I am, and I think the author part of me is a gift from God. Um, I'm the first girl in my family. We are mm -hmm. two, and uh, a boy and a girl. And um, I'm from a family that loves, that loves like God and loves um, wholeheartedly. I'm one who, you know, believes that grace is everything. I mean, someone who is graced by God and someone mm -hmm. who understands that God, I mean, Jesus is basically the essence. Like loving Jesus and loving like Jesus is basically the essence of life. Mm -hmm. I believe wholeheartedly that if you... Um, receive Christ and if you understand the gospel you're one who can talk about love you're one yes. who can sing about love you're one yeah. who can do anything because um, the world is a better place because Jesus came and I know the world would be a better place because people are going to learn more about loving like Christ um, yes. loves us. I love that answer. So welcome so much to the Bibi Babatunde channel. We're Thank so you. glad Thank to have you. Having you. Thank and, you so much. I'm looking forward to all the amazing things you have to share. Ready to draw from you. We're ready. Yeah. Thank We're ready. God. <laughs> <laughs> so your book, Lens. I don't know. I always struggle. Should I call it Lenses or Lens? Like what's yeah. something? Lens. Perfect. Yeah. So your book, Lens. Thank you so much for sharing the copy with me. I've read it. Mm -hmm. And um, um, like it's it's I wish this was a book that I had when I was in a long distance relationship with my husband mm -hmm. a few years back. And it's shared so practical, so interesting tips that I really love, especially from that perspective as a Christian, right? Because many times you may see books on relationships and love and, and you may be missing that God factor. Yeah. So do you want to share your inspiration behind this book? Oh, wow. That's a deep one. Uh, I've always loved writing. Mm -hmm. I'm one who expresses myself with writing. I can write like a whole paragraph. I'm one of those people that on their birthdays or someone else's birthday, I can write paragraph about you. I'm ready for I that. I love that. <laughs> but like, apart from that, I realized that while growing up, I enjoyed writing mm -hmm. and I would express myself more. I would, I kept a diary while, when I was growing up, but I had to trade the way one time when my mom caught me. But that's my new way. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Uh, I wrote, I keep writing and then I, I started, I um, found myself in a writing course, in a writing mm -hmm. class when I was in school. I studied theater and film studies and oh. I had this like, writing lecturer who, you know, gave us an assignment when we were in 200 level and he um, told us to write whatever we wanted to write about, a story that we love to write about. 
and it was a big it was like a project for that particular year and I remember that I, I wrote a love story it was so beautiful and all to me and then I submitted I remember that he he put a red mark on my on my script it was so big with a red mark on it I felt so bad when I saw it I was so confused so when he got to class he was like um if you know you have a red mark on your on your book get stand up and I was like <laughs> oh, I, I looked around I think we're just two I'm oh like two God. of us are going to fail this course <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote like I, I was sure that I wrote about I wrote something about love, something about God and all that. But I mean, so when he we stood up and he was like, "These two people wrote the best story you can ever imagine," wow. and I was like, "Wow!" And it was he, he he kept on talking about how the book inspired him, how it was like, ah, why how come people wrote this much?" And I was like, "Oh wow!" So I figured I did enjoy it, and I and I always like talking about love, mm-hmm. even when I didn't have like a rosy relationship with god you know when you're going back and forth give your life to christ today be gave your life to collect his back and all those kind of things <laughs> i am um, <laughs> i had to i i understood what love was or oh, i just mm-hmm. like the idea of it showing love to people being there for people um and then i initially i thought i had a problem mm. because when i see people react to things and i'm like why are they so cold mm. like why do they behave like that it's like but well, this person just needed help. Like should give, it should render help. It's not that difficult. So I thought I had a problem because I was doing it this way. And so um, I had no idea what I was. I just had, I just knew that I had a passion and I, and I just like to show people um, my heart. Mm. So Les came after I, I've just been served breakfast. <laughs> and, oh. and that breakfast was it was it was it was a it was a wonderful one. Oh my but god. But you know when you get <laughs> you know when you get to a place in life where um you just want to know what is the essence of my being. Hmm. Like I really want to know why you created me. I might have had an idea before, but I really want to know and I really want to function in the place where you have put me. And I really want to do that which you've ordained me to do as a child of God. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be here and just be empty. So um, I then I started asking God, you know, what is in my hand? Mm. And one of the reasons why I wrote, one of the reasons why I gave, I told myself I wanted to write lens or write a book was because I wanted to quote unquote revenge to show the person that I know what I was doing. I know how to <laughs> love. What can teach me how to <laughs> you know, and like just teach people because I know I asked God that period and I was like, God, like, can you explain to me the kind of person I am? Because I'm doing things the proper way, or I'm maybe it looks like I'm being extreme, but like let me know if this is right or not. Mm-hmm. And I remember the Holy Spirit did visit me and did tell me, This is how I want people to be. I want people to be open just like you are. I love them effortlessly. And I want to show you how to love. I want you to show people how to love their people and love me effortlessly as well. Mm. So we started writing. I'll say we because um, I I didn't know what. When I read the book and I'm like me, you didn't write this. Like We started writing and it was very effortless. Um, If I I, I wrote it and when I was done, I started crying. I'm like, wow, like this is this is good. So really, I would say what inspired me was my passion and then the breakfast. So I mixed the breakfast and my passion together. <laughs> I remember my <laughs> I remember my pastor then when I came to um, Canada that period, he would always pray. He was preaching on a series called "Don't Waste Your Pain," and it felt like he was talking to me every day. You just you would preach about it, um, Bible study and normal church service. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your pain. And I'm like, why does this? Why is this much out in my name? Mm. Why is he talking to me? At the end of the day, I realized that I I had a lot of things in my system I needed to share with the world. And then I started, Lens was actually my first book. I've written other books after that. But um, Lens came first and I decided to relaunch it this year. Mm -hmm. Um, I added some few things to it and I relaunched it this year. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I love the fact that you said, like, for our non-Nigerian viewers, when someone says they were served breakfast, it means that they got broken hearted like yeah. so many times i've heard stories of how wonderful things get birthed in that place of pain especially when mm-hmm. the relationship that you thought was it like this is my final 
bus stop, stop before I get married and then it doesn't work out that way. And I'm so thankful that you were able to use this pain to bring about something that would bless others and possibly mm-hmm. help them not to get broken hearted too as well. I think it's so wholesome or so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I also mm-hmm. love the fact that you spoke about doing, it was a partnership with the Holy Spirit. You co-wrote this book with him. And that's why we can trust and know that the things that are in this book would be based on Christian values and yeah. um, it would really lead people and guide them the right way in their relationship. So thank you yeah, so much. Definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so my other question, I actually like to ask people this question because why not? Who are your relationship goals? I know you may have a couple of them, but just give me one and why. Your relationship goals and why. <laughs> I, 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 really, I really do not see... I have few, but I don't like say, okay, this person, like, okay, I must do what they are doing mm. because every relationship is very different. Yes. Um, what works for them might not work for me in my relationship we're very different mm-hmm. but when we say okay what we see and what we admire and what we feel like oh this would i really want this happen to happen to me i really want to have this there are two two couples i i always um actually there are three um the first couple would be um sarah jakes and her husband oh. um i really do like how they do life together um because it's I mean, they make you look effortless, but it's not effortless, but they make you I look know. effortless. And, I mean, pastoring a church and doing life with someone mm-hmm. is good. It's It looks good. And how, you know, she makes me understand that you might be, quote unquote, seen as the powerful woman outside there. But when you come back home, you come back to the place where your place of rest, which is your husband, and you can honor him from that place of power. You know, there are a lot of women that are top like that, not even in a Christian um, form. And maybe their homes are not really as much as, I mean, I don't want to say too much. But then she shows us that you can be everything. And I really love that. And the second couple would be Daddy and Mommy Jew. I just, <laughs> Daddy and Mommy Adeboy, I just, like, I read yesterday's Open Nevels and I'm like, this is so cute. <laughs> How he actually already celebrated her birthday he, um months before we saw it already in the open heavens and he just spoke about how wonderful she is i went to redeemers university and redeemers high school and i had the opportunity to see how you know he treats her or little or the little things i see of how he puts her in charge of some things and how he honors her as his wife so i know that um that's a blessing that i i really do envy i really do pray about mm-hmm. uh, and the third one would be travis green and jackie and dr jackie I listen to Joshua Daki a lot. I just like the fact that, you know, um, she's like the preacher kind of person and um, calm as well. And her husband is the outgoing person. And you see him preach sometimes, but then she's just, you know, the, the, the difference is beautiful and they're always doing things for Christ. So my couple goals would be, would sound, would be Christian, um, Christian couples, because I mean, that's, that's, that's actually the baseline for us, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like I said initially, you can't you can't copy or think about love or look at another a couple goals that people of people that are not in Christ. They wouldn't their um benchmark is not your it's not gonna be your benchmark to be honest. So yeah, it's just people that are in Christ Jesus I look at. I love that. I love the fact that the three examples you gave are those that are actively in ministry. And um it's so beautiful when you see husband and wife coming together to do God's work and to work in purpose and just proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ out all over the world. I think mm-hmm. it's one of the most beautiful things. And I would put it out there for our viewers. If you have any couple goals, please let us know. Mm-hmm. I'm looking out in the co- comment section. Let's see who are your couple goals? Who are your couple goals? Tell us. We want to know who your couple goals are. I'm actually looking forward to see some answers. Because these people that you mentioned now, my plan is to go and look for them on Instagram. Because I didn't know about <laughs> Travis Green and his wife. I'm not very, mm-hmm. I'm not really like into music and things like that. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard for me to like know um those people, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I'll definitely check that out. So please let me know um who your couple goals are, and I will be more than happy to check them out and share it. I really love somebody's comment here. They put 
really love the concept of encouraging others with what you've been through. Don't waste your pain. Yes. Do not bother wasting your pain. It's yeah. very, very important. And some of other people in the chat, they're mentioning mm -hmm. their couple goals. Someone just mentioned Pastor Mildred and Pastor Kingsley Okonko, absolutely, of David's Christian Center in Lagos, mm -hmm. Nigeria. Um, those, are, those are amazing, 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 amazing people. So please keep sharing who your couple goals are. I want to learn more. I want to follow <laughs> more people because my husband and I too were I, I say we're still baby in ministry. We just started a church um, last yeah. year and um, yeah. God has been helping us in our group process and everything that we need to do. And I'm that kind of person that I firmly believe in looking at the people um, in the past, how much they, what they've achieved and what they've done, how yeah. they're able to na navigate their own relationship, their love, mm -hmm. making sure their relationship with God is still there and ministry because you know many times we can mistake ministry for love and <laughs> intimacy like it's completely mm -hmm. different things so i really mm -hmm. love that oh someone just mentioned pastor mike todd and natalie pastor natalie awesome thank you so much for those examples i love that so i'm gonna move to um the next question and the question is what are some reasons why you think people find it hard to love practically like christ in their relationship and i'll add more um meat to this question because we hear things like love is not enough right <laughs> i'm not going to sing the full song <laughs> love is not enough how about this how about that how about these and many people mention many other things so what do you mm -hmm. think are the reasons why people find it hard to love practically like christ in their relationships I think that the, one of the major reasons is because we are flesh mm. and we just get distracted. And, you know, as human beings, we still have that, uh, that, that thing of doubt. We're not, we're not solely giving ourselves to, to God and to the process. So we think that I can still do some things on my own. You know, when you're thinking about, let's even remove love. When you're thinking about maybe, um, preparing for an interview and all you feel like you can do it all by yourself you mm -hmm. can get ready you, you really don't need god you know your brain is there and everything that's how it works with love sometimes we, we are looking at it like i know what to do i know how to speak to her i know what to say and everything so you just feel like uh, i don't need to <laughs> do exactly what people are saying oh, we'll do our own in our, in our different way but in our in our way but the truth is um if we actually submit mm -hmm. and they also some people actually feel like um doing things the biblical way is boring and or like i mean like christ is boring don't and share too much on that because that's actually my next question <laughs> <laughs> okay 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 then you can ask your next question so i don't go <laughs> but other than the boring part can you share other okay. about no but just yeah. it's just us not being um submissive like fully submissive to christ helping us because the person you're loving they basically have their manual created by god mm -hmm. i guess this ask god um what do you need me to do about this person and it's not one-sided it's both i mean the two people involved in the relationship ask god um what do what do you think i need to know Mm -hmm. How do you think this person will react to this? Tell me. Because it's a relationship with God as well. You, we can, we feel like we can involve God in some things and move him in another thing. Yeah. But I realize you can actually, it's everything. I mean, it's a walk with God. It's a partnership and it's forever in all you do. Like sometimes I, I have a friend that she's always telling me, um, she, she just likes to be around me when I'm having a conversation with God. I can be driving. I'm like, God, I'm like, oh Lord please, as we're going now, because I don't want traffic. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying that. She's like, do you know you're praying? I'm like, I know I'm praying. Because it's just, to me, I feel like he's just right beside me, so I can just yeah. say something to him, and I know that you answer. So if we can do that with our relationship, our food, our children, everything we are doing, we let him know, what do you want me to do? Sweet Holy Spirit, how do you want me to move? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to say to her when I see her? What do you think? How is he going to behave? Is he going to receive this thing? Like that. And he would definitely help you. As long as he has said, he made you meet this person and he has said this is a partner you're supposed to be with, mm -hmm. he would guide you. Mm -hmm. Because the whole essence of relationship and marriage was created by God, not man. Yeah. So the person that created it is the one that has the ultimate idea, ultimate um everything about it. So just ask. 
like it's not difficult i, I realize that it's not difficult just go just just say it mm-hmm. i need him help me mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. will definitely help just that we have not gotten to the understanding that we can actually ask god that kind of thing you feel like oh there's some things i should talk about with god and some things i should talk about with god but we have to talk about everything with god yes so so true i really like that you mentioned that talking to god it matters right and um another thing i would like to add just to what you said is that many times we feel like we don't have the capacity to love like christ we kind of box that oh god's love is different my love is different but then we see we open up scripture and we see in romans chapter 5 verse 5 right and hope does not put us to shame because Mm -hmm. the love of god has been poured into our hearts by the giving of the holy spirit so the fact that you believe in jesus christ and what he did on the cross means that you've received the holy spirit Mm -hmm. and that holy spirit did not just come on his own right it came with love god's kind of love so it's there the capacity is there and i think many times we um I, i shared on twitter this week about many times we feel like Oh, love is different from patience and kindness and long suffering and all of this. But then when we open up the Bible, right, in Galatians 5, verse 2, I believe, right, it says, and the fruit of the spirit is love Mm -hmm. and this and that. But we think it's fruits of the spirit. It's not fruits. It's fruit, Mm -hmm. one. It being love. So it's that same love of God that you've received that has led to the entrance of the Holy Spirit in your heart that will generate the other things that you need to be loving. So whenever you find yourself going through times where you feel like, oh, you're not loving like Christ, right? We see it in, is it 1 Corinthians 13 or 14 that talks about love is patient and love is kind and love does not boast and love does not get easily angered and love does not do this. And like a lot of things that love does and love doesn't do, right? It's just Mm -hmm. for us to remind ourselves that we have the spirit of God in us and he's the one that produces the fruit of his spirit not the fruit of our spirit so whenever we struggle with expressing those things is for us to take from within and put upon knowing that i have the spirit of god in me therefore i have the love of god in me so if i'm struggling (laughs) (laughs) so if i'm struggling with this impatient because we're flesh right there'll be certain times where we would not be as patient as we ought to be or be as kind as we ought to be then we remind ourselves we go back to who we are in christ we take from within and put up on and i know many times like um like as a virtue of ministry and oh i reach out people reach out to me and be like oh i want to pray concerning my relationship what's mm. going on in the relationship right say oh my husband is doing this or my boyfriend is doing that i'm like okay fine we'll pray but one thing i've seen about prayer is that we sometimes go to god and say god please change this person mm. ends up doing this, changing mm. us so mm. if someone is doing something and you're not being patient with them, you're like, I'm going to pray to God to change them, then God expands your capacity to mm-hmm. be more patient. God expands your capacity to be more kind. That you yourself, you look at, I'm like, ah, this thing that I'm complaining about, it doesn't bother me anymore. And that right like, there is growth. Like, yeah. and all we aspire, like nobody wants to live on earth and not, and not grow. Like, what are you talking about? So I really mm-hmm. love what you said. So I'm going to finally let you move back to the second question <laughs> about boring. <laughs> so as you know, in the streets, there, <laughs> is in the street? in the streets, there's this notion of my like, Christian relationships are boring. Mm-hmm. So without spilling too much, can you just tease us with a few ideas here and there on how to make Christian relationships not boring but godly? So <laughs> you know why someone tweets like, how can I how can I be fun in a way that will please God? How you say I you be- want you say the guy wants a wants a Mary Manali the sprinkle of Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> but i mean the um when it comes to godly relationships here yeah, mm-hmm. i feel like we we're the ones we people around are the ones that make it look like it is very big and very um it's something that we cannot understand yeah. but like one thing i used to say is i look at jesus right and just look at his examples he was someone who was attentive to details yes um when the story of the woman by the well, 
I think that was well, that's one of the most romantic story I've read in the Bible. And I read it with I read it with I read it with love in my eyes. I read it with like the romantic mindset. You know, you met someone who she's she's had like multiple husbands and you you want to speak to her. And um you like you already see what she's going through as Jesus. You already saw what she was going through, you saw how her life was and everything, and you wanted to win her. And all he just did was sit by her and start talking to her. I can imagine the words and how calm it would have made her feel. That kind of woman who has got like nine husbands, saying, you know, calm her down. And you just see her, she will feel like, ah, who is this fine boy? <laughs> who is this fine boy talking to me? And he's like bringing the points <laughs> lines and everything. And he was really, he really spoke to her in a very calm way. And then he revealed mm-hmm. to her who she was. Then he also told her what he had for her and then changed her life. And that woman, she couldn't wait. She told everybody, come and see the man who changed my life. Come mm-hmm. and see the man who spoke to me. I used to imagine how Jesus spoke to her. Like, I'm like, how how kind, how calm, not judgmental. How wonderful would you have spoken to this woman to the point that she had to tell everybody, come and see who mm. changed my life. And she has been, she, she I mean, people um, hated her. People were treating her anyhow because, I mean, she had different husbands, but just the way God approached her. So, um, how to make it, what I'm actually saying, how to make it not boring is you looking looking at the person like, think about yourself. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do to myself that I would enjoy and then I would do it to somebody else? So first of all, it, it comes from the place of loving yourself. How, first of all, knowing how Jesus loves you, knowing that Jesus loves you. Mm-hmm. For me, my relationship with God is like a love affair. And I, I I always say I'm like God. I know you 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 want my life with love because you know that if it was any other way, I might not answer you. <laughs> so like it's like a love affair. I feel like someone just cares about me, cares mm-hmm. so much. Okay, I know actually that someone cares so much about me, about details in my life. So first of all, I understand how much he loves me. What are the plans he has for me? How he caters for me? the things that he wants me to do, how he wants me to achieve my goals and many other things. Mm-hmm. And then he's it's teaching me how to love somebody else. Loving somebody else just like you love yourself, what you can buy for yourself, what trips you can take by yourself, what things you can do, I mean, with yourself. You can think about sharing that space with somebody else. That's one thing that breaks the bottom. Or oh, personally, I love, I can have, I'm, I'm always playing, like I'm always like, I'm having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always having fun. So I know if someone comes in my space now, it better should be ready for fun because I don't think that life should be taken ter- like really hard. You can't be tightening the world to your chest. And it's not that like, deep. It's not that deep. <laughs> so don't make it look like that. And so if you can be patient with someone, if you can understand the person, if you are, if you know the love language, I tell people, love someone with their love language. That's another thing that doesn't make it boring. Now you come into me, you're giving me my love. My ultimate love language is um, words of affirmation. If you're coming to me, you're giving me uh, and gift giving to, and uh, maybe um, helping me to pack up things. I'm like, I can do it myself. And you're like, ah, this gives me for like me show that I love her. I'm like, my head. I'm like, but if I've told you over and over again that my my love language is words of affirmation and gift giving, and you come today with the gifts. Definitely, you see me smile. I sit down beside you, and I'm like, okay. So, what do you want to say? Or, um, you know, you're speaking the words to me. I would, it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be boring to me. That's that's another one. Another thing you should do is, whatever act, like I said initially, whatever thing, whatever activity you see that people are doing, it's not of the world. Hmm. I mean, it's not bad now. Um, try and go go see the movie. Don't just think because we are Christians, we should just stay and read and read our Bible. That's why we are in the world. We're not. We're not um we're not an island. We're not supposed to be separate from every every other person. We're the light of the world. That's why we are in the world. We're supposed to show them light while we're in the world. So things that people are doing, we can do them as well. But we do them in a very good in the way God wants us to, to do. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to show, if you're going to do some activities, you're going to go places. If you're going to have so much fun, just do it and enjoy yourself. Don't think that there's something hindering you. I feel like we we already judge ourselves before we even make some move. No, yeah. nothing is hindering you. Just open your heart to, and I always say it's two-sided. When both when the both parties are open their hearts to um loving like mm-hmm. loving like I'm loving myself. 
Mm-hmm. This person is a replica of me, or this person is my mirror, and I want to do exactly what I'm doing to this person to myself. I feel like it's not going to be boring because mm-hmm. it's like you're enjoying your company, like you're yes. enjoying yourself. Yeah, I'm not married, but I I enjoy <laughs> talking about relationships so much. I remember the first time I got an idea, the idea to start writing. I told my mentor the first thing that's in my head is to write about marriages, and the man was like. Hey, why are you not writing? I'm like, no, the old people will laugh at me. I don't know anything about this relationship. And I'm not married. And he said, What did what did what did the Holy Spirit tell you? I said, the Holy Spirit told me he writes with me. I said, then write it. I was itch- I was initially very scared to write because I thought they, I, we, we, we wouldn't be accepted. But I just thank God that along the line has been accepted by everyone, even from a single girl. <laughs> And I really like that you mentioned that. And the reason why <laughs> it's interesting is because many times, right, we feel like um, as, not we, but like, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, number one, think about the person that spoke the most about marriage in the Bible. Apostle Paul. It was a single <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't married, but mm-hmm. he shared so much wealth of knowledge that has been helping marriages since before time began. True. So I don't think anybody should put themselves in certain boxes like, oh, I can't, like, for example, now I'm child free and I'm like very active in children's ministry, right? Mm-hmm. I'm always reading about children's development and things like that. And no one can really tell me that, oh, don't, I mean, I'm not going to tell people how to like, what to do or whatever mm-hmm. but there's also that part of inspiration from the holy spirit the spirit and it, yeah. and it does help right there is mm-hmm. testimonies of oh that little tip you gave me it worked it doesn't we should not despise the container that brings relief or joy mm-hmm. or something helpful mm-hmm. to us no 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 so i'm gonna put it out there to our viewers what are some tips that you would share to help christian relationships be much more fun in a godly way because as believers we have boundaries yeah we do we do and these boundaries are by the holy spirit by god and these boundaries is not for us to be bored right but it's for our own good for our own protection god gave Mm -hmm. us boundaries because he loves us so much and he doesn't want us to get hurt so if there are any ideas on how to make your if you're in a godly relationship how are you making it fun please give us some gist how are you making it fun are you making it happy and why people are still typing up i think the first thing i would say is along the lines of what you said like it's a relationship right because we are christians does not mean that we don't know how to smile we don't know how to have a good time we don't know how to compliment each other we don't know how to love upon each other no 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 no, no. we don't know how to go out and see places it's very very important and uh, someone just anna on um youtube just actually said some people are already conditioned to think Christian dating stars marriage is are boring. Mm-hmm. So you have, have to like Christian break down the wall. To break out of yeah. it, right? Follow people that um that are in relationships that that look fun and like they're having the time of their life while still being godly, right? It's mm-hmm. not until you drink a whole bottle of vodka or smoke a whole joint or, I don't yes. know, go to the latest nightclub before you say, oh, mm-hmm. I'm having the time. I think sometimes we just have to reimagine. So those examples I mentioned, it's not to judge anybody. So in case if there's any believer here that, feel like they still have issues dealing with those things this is not to judge you there's no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus no but it's right to know that fun does not start and end with alcohol or any form of immoral behavior or things like that so um it's very important so for i just said be a fun person yourself so when relationship comes you enjoy the same activities with your partner you can go to the on date ideas non-christian you so true you can go to the park i remember when i was dating my husband back in abuja right we'll go to millennium park with a blanket and some mm-hmm. snacks laid on the floor and the parks are always very lively people are playing music we'll just sit there geez then talk mm-hmm. Talk is we are in public, so there's no temptation to say, Oh, I fell, or no, no, <laughs> open for everybody. To, 
I know young Christians, gener this new generation, they don't they don't do things like older Christians used to, right? The oh oh, don't be in a private place alone with your significant other to reduce the chances of sleeping and all. I know those kind of things are considered old school. Me, I'm still I'm old, old school. I'm still old school. Old school. <laughs> I rather be old school and do it right. <laughs> don't sit on fire so that mm -hmm. it does not burn you. Right. It's very so go to the park right go out to restaurants go hiking like there's so many things you can do find things game nights play games cook together try new recipes there's mm -hmm. so many so many things you can even date virtually like a lot yeah. of things and do Honestly, a lot of it's just, so make, just, things just just think like this person is your friend how you want to relate exactly. to exactly like what makes you come alive when I, when you're with your friends add that to the relationship and you would yeah. see like there would be a difference in what you're doing don't don't be a boring person like i always say um I mean, I'm not the kind of person I would say Jesus aside. No, no, no. But let me just phrase my con question very well. Like, be interesting in other things aside from your faith. Yeah. So there's politics, fashion, yeah. business, entertainment, music, food. There's so many things to be interested be very in. Very knowledgeable about Don't those be things. Very, read up on stuff. Read books watch movies right i mean it doesn't have to be movies that have like r-rated stuff you can mm -hmm. watch clean movies and all because i mean your concentration is still a very important part of yeah. this whole thing so those practical tips are they're so, so important that when you're having a conversation with your partner it's not just jesus 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 conversation mm -hmm. you can talk about what's happening around you and both mm -hmm. of you can feel while you're talking together so really we're supposed to do all the things we can do together if we can. Yes, yes. Um, Oriami just said, or rather, I yeah, Oriami I know said, I believe fun is relative. What's fun with you might not necessarily be fun for me. And that is true. That's true. That is true, Ani. Like, so figure it out. And that goes back to when your selection process, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to select someone that is millions of galaxies away from mm -hmm. what you're interested in. Exactly. Like we always say similar values, similar interests are a really important key or foundation to building a wonderful relationship. So if you don't have anything else to add to that question, is it okay for me to move to the next question? Yes, please. Yes, please. It's okay. All right. It's so my coming. question for you is if you could give one piece of advice to the viewers about how to improve their relationship, what would it be? Hmm. Um, I want to say communication, but I, I sometimes I feel like it might be a cliche. Oh, I feel I would say that communication is key, like mm -hmm. it makes life easier. Oh, I'll add something to it, but I would say communication is key. Um, how you want to break that communication, break it to the to the littlest. The person must understand you to the littlest. Like, if I'm passing information to you right now. Mm -hmm and you don't understand i'm going to make sure you understand so that i know that it was an adequate communication the person mm -hmm. that received it if the feedback isn't this isn't the feedback i'm expecting then i know there's a problem there's a problem while i was transmitting that communication yes this is why i'm a communication expert so i'm always taking communication very seriously but just thinking about it if i'm talking to someone right now and i want them to understand where i'm coming from i also want to listen to them as well i'll have to break it down mm -hmm. and another thing again i'll say is listen yeah. don't listen because you want to hear listen because you want to understand and i tell my friends whenever they talk to me whenever they're asking me questions and i'm like oh that day you said this this this, this and you said that you're even wearing this color of good they're like ah i hope you can remember i'm like because i didn't listen to you i listened mm -hmm. through you i was trying to understand where you were coming from while you were talking to me like ah to me so deep. i'm like no it's just how it should be mm -hmm. like the person that is talking to you, sharing a story with you, really wants you to listen to them, not because you want to res they want to respond to you, because they actually want to know where you're coming from. They want to know why you're saying what you're saying, and they want to know what they can. Now they want to know how they can respond to you, that everything will be fine when they finish responding to you. So in our relationships, where some people might be having having issues and they're wondering what's going on, why am I, why is this not working out the same way I want this to work out? First of all, ask yourself, how's our communication process like? Mm -hmm. How are we communicating? Whenever I say this to, this to him or to her, how does she react to me? 
maybe I should break it down. That's one. Secondly, do I listen to him or do I listen to my girlfriend because I want to say my own, talk your own, make I talk my own, that kind of thing? Do I want to fight? Am I very aggressive? What's going on? You need to understand those things. And then when you see that, okay, this is, maybe you can see the mistake or see whatever is working for you, then you can walk around it. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, what again, what else you can use to improve your relationship? Just stay with the Holy Spirit. Stay with the Holy Spirit. That's, that is very ideal. Like the way we ask um, God, what's my purpose? What do you mm -hmm. crave me for? Why am I on earth? Like even a nylon bag knows why it's created. <laughs> even i mean what we are the camera there's a reason why, I, why the camera is created so why not me and why not the relationship why don't i know the purpose of this relationship okay why did you bring me together with this person um why are we together if it's friendship if it's relationship if it's marriage let us know why you created us together and then if it's i mean definitely it's will align if you're going to be married by led by the Holy Spirit, it's going to definitely the um the purpose is aligned and you're like, okay, what do you want us to do? That would help you. I feel like once we always use, because I mean, when when um Jesus left, when he was leaving, he said, I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to leave something with you. And that's the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, that like, who's going to be guiding you, comfort mm -hmm. you, who's going to be there for you. So I feel like we should make use of the Holy Spirit because there are a lot of questions. I used to call the Holy Spirit, man, I'm a ball partner. Because I there's some things that, <laughs> there's some things that you would tell me you wouldn't tell me and I would just come and tell you oh um so I had a dream <laughs> I think my friends don't like that they always like I don't <laughs> like that you have a dream I don't like I'm like so I had a dream just a question so I had a dream and I said this and like oh my god and I'm like yeah I don't I just wanted to ask if I was right or not so I just wanted to know and I was like oh my god Holy Spirit's cheating I'm like Holy Spirit is giving you all the expo I'm like yeah because I, I, I say, I guess I submit myself to listening to what the Holy Spirit has to say when it comes to things and when it mm -hmm. comes to relationship and even my friendship. Um, what else again? I think that's like one or two or three things I can say to improve your relationship. And always, another thing is I always think about what the person, um, what the person would do in that situation. Mm -hmm. Like, um, if I get her this gift, how will she react? If I react like this, how would they react? Think about the next person. You know, in Nigeria, they used to say one thing that um, when you're driving, think everybody around you is mad and you're the only one. I think it's the wrongest <laughs> idea ever. Oh you know, it's, it's the wrongest idea ever because you can't think that someone is mad. They're not mad. They are, they are saying that's why they're on the road. So think about it. Don't think about the person like the person is fighting you. No. Mm -hmm. Think about the person. The person really has a good uh, mindset towards you. And then what can I do as well? know that they have a good mindset towards you and then mm -hmm. you're in a relationship with them yeah so thank you. you you've absolutely shared a lot and i i really yeah. appreciate <laughs> that you've said that and i'm just looking through the comments to see what our awesome viewers which i would be reminding to smash that subscribe button if you haven't already yes please do so yeah so um anna is saying do a review of your relationship starts marriage what you love and what you love for your partner to change or improve on absolutely self-reflection is so key right it's very good for you to reflect and honestly many of us like to think oh i'm the best next best thing after sliced I bread know. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes you miss not, everybody has areas of improvement. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, nobody yeah, perfect. Yeah. We're all work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. There are areas for us to improve upon. There are areas for us to like find work. Like for example, if you're in a relationship with someone that is passive aggressive, right? So it's just a simple conversation. Oh, I would prefer if you tell me that I did something wrong than spending your whole afternoon giving me the silent treatment. I feel, and I, I, I would yeah. stand, this is a hill I would live on silent treatment is very ungodly right god does not give us silent treatment and we are children of god which means our conduct our behavior align with who christ is so if you ever have issues and silent treatment is very different from um you know when you are having uh, like an argument and you need to step aside to collect your thoughts so that you don't say something that would harm the other person right so those are two different things completely 
but mm -hmm. saying that I'm going to withhold affection, I'm going to withhold communication from you because of a situation that is very ungodly. And I think we shouldn't find that in our midst as believers. So yeah, yeah. self-reflection is very important. There's so many ways that you can improve your relationship, right? Um, mm -hmm. and like, And also just asking questions. Like, am I loving you the way you want to be loved? Exactly. And you'd be surprised the answer the person will give, right? Oh, yes, you're doing a good job, but I love when you do this. Exactly. I love when... And you previously mentioned love languages, and I think they're amazing, right? And I feel like everything matters, right? So also knowing how you want to be loved. There's this tool we use at work, and I, I think it's called Crystal Knows. And the essence of the tool, when the person came to present the tool to our team, he had made an example. Like, you know, many times you say, um, love other people the way you love yourself. But how about we think about, no, treat other people the way you, you would like to be treated or something along those lines. That how about we treat people the way they would like to be treated? Because mm -hmm. me, I may not mind my partner posting an embarrassing picture of me and putting, um, a meme like using me as a meme or using me as a sticker i may laugh about it but mm. another person would be absolutely petrified at the idea of their partner doing something like that to them so mm. we're all different different people so um they're asking in the chat is someone says delivery to is very key in when you're communicating yeah because yeah. it's dead more light on how we deliver so do you yeah. have any thoughts on that yeah if you I have do. questions keep it coming if you have comments keep it coming we'll try our best to address it so go ahead i can make just like when you said um if you know someone that is passive or passive aggressive or aggressive or whatever it's just for you to you know think about how you need to deliver this information to the person you mm -hmm. don't have to be aggressive you can be assertive and you can be um you can be you, you can be mild like I used to think about how I want to be spoken to. Mm. I know I don't I don't need to show you that this is how you I I always in the book. Some there's some information I want to pass across that you don't have to shout. Don't shout at me, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, shout at me, please. Because anytime my I feel like anytime my parents shout at me, I don't do what they say I should do as, mm. as a child. I'm like, oh, okay, you shouted, good for you. Because <laughs> I was really stubborn. But when you just come to tell me, oh, do you know that this is the reason why? I said this and I said that and I did this and that. It makes me see, okay, this person see, sees me as a cultured woman being and yeah. ready to teach me, ready to listen to me. So there's a way you present. You can just, I knew you can say shut up. And the person is like, ah, why are you talking to me? They cannot say, uh uh, shut up now. It's not like that. And the person will take offense. So it's how the tone, we need to watch our tone, our body language as well. Yeah. We're not, we're not saying this thing should be a casting stone and it's rigid, no. You're supposed to just know that you're not supposed to treat someone someone else like they're just a common yeah. yeah. You're supposed to treat them, just look at them, how Jesus will love them. And that's why I always use the example of the woman by the well. Every other person yeah. made her look like she was nothing. Even the woman with the issue of blood, every other person made her look like she was nothing, like she was useless. By the end of the day, Jesus met them and he changed their life. Um, Even the yeah. this is Rehab, Rehab would have been the oh, um, cast uh, away. Uh, a know. sex worker. No. You get so you have been like, ah, please, I don't understand. I can't stay with you. I can't be around you. But the way our Lord, you know, comes with her, changed her life. It's how we should be, we should think about when, when it comes to um passing messages across, loving people, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Like delivery matters, right? In in our in me and my husband's relationship, I don't think there's any point in time we've ever used like abusive language or just being outrightly mean, like or shouting at each other. Like it's it's like an established thing. Like from way back, no, we don't do that. We're not that kind of couple. We have conversations the way like Christ would. Like we're not shouting. We're not emotionally abusive, right? It doesn't matter. You know, many times you'll be like, oh, it's because she did like that. That's why you know. But that's you have to as adults, we have to learn how to regulate 
our emotions because if you are in your workplace and your co-worker annoys you you're not just going to flip out you have to be professional i mean then also remembering that we are um the bible makes us understand that we should um oh i think i lost antonia um let's just give her a minute to come back i just lost that but i'll keep sharing right this says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh so it's when we walk in the spirit right we would not fulfill the desires of the flesh so shouting and yelling and using abusive languages and all these other things okay she's back now it's not who we are <laughs> it's very important for us to know um it's very very key for us to know so i just wanted to put that out there like no it's very very important for us to mind our tone right speak to each other like loving people like oh all those you no know, there isn't that oh transfer of aggression something was happening somewhere and you came back and you had to like transfer aggression no 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 that's not that's not who we are it's very important um yeah please don't forget to send in if you have questions please feel free to put it in the um youtube comment would we'll see it or highlight it in we would answer before um the end of the session so i hope we've all been learning something today i've definitely learned a lot which leads me to my next question because the viewers want to hear <laughs> there are a million relationship books out there what makes your own different what makes it unique mm. okay what makes my unique is that it was led by the holy spirit one two um it has a couple of do's and don'ts that any other person can relate to it so i would say that personally i write like i'm having a conversation with you i'm sure when you're reading you feel like you're just there with me yes i write like i'm having a conversation with you i write with the littlest language you can ever think of so that if anybody picks it anywhere even if it's a child mm -hmm. they'll be able to understand what i'm talking about and they don't have to speak a dictionary um my writing lecturer then will say his lecturer was Wole Shoinka, but his mentor was Wole Shoinka, but he never writes like Wole Shoinka. He writes like himself because he knows that everybody must read my book. So I want to be able to communicate like that openly. And I picked that from him. And I also, another mentor that I, I read from is um, Bishop Walioke. He writes, Bishop Walioke, he writes like he's basically in the room with you. And he's, he's basically speaking to you. You feel like this person understands me or this person is around me. Mm -hmm. I love, I'm listening to you. I'm not just reading from you. Mm -hmm. I think that's one unique thing about the way I write. And this particular book, um, the reason why I know that you should get it as part of one of the books on, on your shelf is because um, in no time you're done with it. And I know that as you're reading it, the Holy Spirit will inspire you because while writing it, I wrote it prayerfully. I didn't write it alone. I would say with God, um, with the Holy Spirit pushing me and leading me, and I know that I'm going to speak to you. So, get the book. <laughs> yes, get the book, get the book. Yes, and that's one thing I loved, right? I read it like those of oh, all oh, half of the book was do's, half was don't. And I like the fact that you had a disclaimer in the beginning, like, okay, this is not the Bible, right? But these mm -hmm. are ideas, and I think, um, even as we previously spoke about improving our relationships, we we'll always need ideas. We we'll always need things to fall back on. And that's why I think um, Antonia's book is such a wonderful book. And I think everyone should be able to get it, which leads me to my next question. Where can we find this book? Um, the book is currently on Amazon. It's currently on Amazon. I know people from Nigeria are unable to get it for now. But we're working on getting it on Jumia and other platforms that you can get it on. But currently, you can download, you can get the book on Amazon. And I really do not want people to have the soft copy because I love mm -hmm. hard. <laughs> but if you want to get the soft copy, it's on Okada book. It's on um, Kindle as well. So those are places you can get the book. Mm, amazing. Thank you so much. And Thank I've you. also included um, the link to the book in the description of this video. So you can easily just click the link. If you'd like to connect with Antonia, I also put her Instagram link down there. So follow on Instagram. If you have more questions, please feel free to reach out to her. She's a resource, right? <laughs> us yeah reach out to me too we are resources right you don't mm -hmm. have to go through um 
life and relationships on your own like you don't have a whole family mm-hmm. of believers all around the world happy to help you and impact you and just yeah generally just make things work so True. before we get off do you have any final thoughts for our viewers um i i really don't have so much but i'm just praying that everyone actually has that heart and god wants us to have because it, it changed the world it changes the world totally um it doesn't have to be your romantic relationship it's just you showing that affection to somebody around you maybe who is suffering always going don't think about the fact that oh it's just i just want to take care of myself i just want to be on my own and be good let's just show love to everyone around us if we can let's understand what god actually wants us to do to people around us mm-hmm. Why we love your neighbor as you love yourself the only thing that i know keeps me going the fact that i know when someone is around me, even if i cannot give them money or anything i can be there for them with, with, with the way i can with my substance or me being available for them or just me listening to them you know that's another way that you can, you know, show love to people. And it changes the world. To be honest, it changes what is around you. If in our churches we have everyone, you know, just actively showing love to each other, actively caring about each other, actively being kind to each other, you know, from the church, it will transcend into the schools, into our career, into places that we never imagined. And the world would be a better place. Like whenever I, I hear bad news of people killing so I'm like, how on earth did you get to the point where you picked up a gun and you shot someone? You didn't mm. like how cold can your heart be? Like, how is it possible? Like, how is it that this person hasn't encountered so much love that you can actually just end someone's life just like that? You know, so that's actually what I I I want for everybody in the world. Like, just just think about our life and think about how God loves us and treat people the same way that Jesus wants us to treat them. I think Mm. with that, we should be able to have a better place. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, Mm. we forget that the society we have right now is a reflection of the family unit. And the family is only as strong as the couple, right? The father and the mother. Mm -hmm. Um, We have many broken adults out there. Why? the relationship between their parents, yes. their upbringing, their childhood. Like there's no a lot of role models. In our generation, we must not just be a talking generation. We must also do that our children will look at our love story and be like, I want what mommy and daddy has. Right? That they'll be able to say, I, I have an example. I mean, someone once told me that if you can count seven working marriages, hmm that you are connected to. So maybe your parents, your uncle, your aunt, your church members that you can see and learn from that is like not online or social media on TV, then you're actually very fortunate. Mm. And when I heard that, it really broke my heart because seven, right? But knowing that the bedrock of society is strong families. Mm. And when you see relationships that are working, please send them prayers, send positive, like encourage them because without good healthy working relationships and marriages we are we are are leading to doom and destruction i watch a lot of crime tv um criminal minds and all and many times when they investigate how did this person become like this it goes back to the family family is such a very important unit so wherever you are, I hope this has encouraged you to just show love to your family, purpose in your heart that my relationship, my marriage will be different and will keep praying and trusting God to keep doing the marvelous work in us for us to have beautiful, wonderful Christian homes mm-hmm. that impact the society and generations and generations and generations. Amen. So this brings us to the end of our conversation oh God, today it it's so fun <laughs> if you stayed to the very end you're the real MVP. i know right <laughs> please please don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button it makes it makes my heart leap for joy when you 
smash that button so please don't forget to hit that button it's been so good chatting with you antonia thank you. Thank you. um thank you so much everyone for tuning in i would mention everybody's name but it will be too long but thank you for watching this video it means thank a lot you. to us and we hope that you buy this book buy this book for your friends your family a buy this book for your partner buy this book if i buy it and just do giveaway if i make you your new birthday gift book <laughs> that you give it as birthday gift so Bye. let's support one another don't mm -hmm. forget to hit that subscribe button and that like button because don't let me come for you i'm just joking i would never do that but please it's very encouraging when you like and subscribe mm -hmm. thank you so much for staying to the very end with jesus love bye thank Happy you so much for having me i really do oh. appreciate it thank you so much for your time i'm, I'm so, really so really glad appreciate it. Thank i'm you. so glad we did this all right good night everybody bye everyone good night. bye oh thank you jesus thank god <laughs> mm -hmm. i think we're still live a bit yeah i'm trying to end it but it's not letting me end let's okay and broadcast now okay it's not letting me end it i don't know why maybe i maybe oh let me see if i close okay and broadcast